How's it going out there, YouTube, model from building communities? This is Mike. How y'all doing? Um, this is a, kind of an official announcement to the all Mopar group build that I'd like to put on, you know, since, you know, my channel is based around Mopar and stuff. But what it, what it is, I, I, if y'all want to join, join up. There's really no time limit. Just whenever you get it finished, post your videos. Uh, your updates and your in your finals. Um, I started to whenever you like. Uh, kind of a loose build, but anyway, the theme is you know, like I said, is either your favorite Mopar or or your um, dream car, uh, or if you have a story, if you had one of the uh, particular car and you want to build that kid, uh, that'd be all right too, and. And when you do your videos, you can you know put a little story behind it. Why this or why that? Like I'm gonna have a little story on on what what and why I'm building this one. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I just find that interesting. Um, cars are you know part of the culture, especially here in America, uh, and they all have a little story or something to say. Uh, like I said, whether you grew up around one or you own one or you know. It, it depends. Uh, as the story is, I'm going to show you what I'm fixing to do. As you probably well know, is the video that I posted the other day. It's going to start out with this kit. But it's going to be a conglomeration of different kits put together as far as uh, putting the build on. Uh, some Ravel pieces, uh, AMT chassis, and and, and rear end because it's actually got an eight and three quarter end that I can put under there. Uh, various, you know, I'm using the Johan body uh, in the hood because their interior parts are trash. Uh, their, you know, chassis molded in, rear ends, axles going through engine blocks. I'm going to try to incorporate AMT with some Ravel. I got a 440 engine but his was a 383 but if you put them together you know from model size they look similar uh shapely valve cover because 383 had 440 heads anyway so it had 440 valve covers um anyway i'm gonna put one in my i'm gonna try to get close to original because he kept it like that until he sold it my uncle sold it in 1960 in 1985 um but my aunt audrey uh drove the car uh, i grew up around it and the story has it, like I said, he bought it in the middle of uh, August of 69. Uh, I was born out in California the 29th of July. I was five, six weeks old, maybe. And mom and dad was going to come back to Carol, you know, back to South Carolina. And that's my mom's brother. So uncle went to go pick us up from the airport. After right, It was a few days after he bought the car. And, Two three days after he bought the car, he's gonna pick us up. And uh, long story short, I was told that was first probably Mopar that I ever rode in, five six weeks old. Well, during the years I grew up around the car, uh, my aunt Audrey she drove it mostly. Uh, Uncle Eddie had a pickup at the time. Uh, after they got married in the early seventies, she she drove it, and uh, it was a daily driver up to nineteen eighty five. I mean, you know, good good car. It was always dependable, and run like Scouted Eight. It would go fast. It was a, a fast, of course. You know, it was all road runners are. But uh, anyway, I remember times like I said, my aunt Audrey would take us, take us kids. Uh, I had a younger cousin, and of course my sister, and, and various other family members would would, would pile up in that old car, and it was old car a new car and we'd go to the lake and she would take us uptown to the dollar store and you know just had fond memories of the car I mean it run good it sounded good and um, you know I grew up around the car and as I got older I you know when I started liking cars and you know 10 12 11 years old 13 years old that's that's the kind of car I wanted and long story short I I got one in 84 first car anyhow but uh, I was gonna do that to uh, and build this car and it came 
As you see some of the pictures, let's see, I don't know where my paint is. Here, up. Oh. I was going to use some of this scale finishes. And, you know, Benny loves Benny to football model yards, recommends it, and I'm going to give it a shot. And besides, it's F8 Ivy Green, and it's the exact color of his car. Well, his car was fairly rare. It was triple green. It had a green exterior, green, green vinyl top, green inside, green interior. And it had a, uh, a, a, a gator skin type vinyl top. From understand, that's kind of a rare option on those cars. A uh, more expensive option, I, I would think. And they had a, a, a rare sports stripe down the, both sides of it. And of course, the hood had the blacked out treatment. Uh, it had the uh, Magna 500 trim ring, you know, steel wheels. And <clears throat> and that car, when he got rid of it, was immaculate in 1985. And I hate to this day, I didn't go scrape around the money to buy that, that car from, from him. And I don't know, it'd be in better shape than what mine is right now, probably. Um, but anyway, that's what I'm going to do, gentlemen. And I would have, you know, appreciate it if uh, y'all would join in and uh, that'd be exciting or be cool uh, to, uh, you know, hear your stories about the cars and, you know. Uh, but like I said, there's no set time. You just you know, start it from now to whenever you get finished and just, just label it or just list it all Mopar group bill. And uh, I'll pick it up and I'll watch them and uh, I'll try to put them in a playlist together. And, uh, you know, well, anyway, guys, I've rambled on enough and I'll be doing some, I've been gathering up uh, parts, you know, for the kit and I've got to, uh, I can keep them all in these these uh, plastic shoe boxes, my project parts and stuff. And these cars, these models come in various colors, if you will. I picked them up off eBay. I, I catch them every once in a while. You know, get them for about fifty or sixty bucks if you're lucky. Cause the last one I seen online was one hundred and fifteen dollars, sealed up for these these Joe Joe hand kits. Like I said, it's the only company that I know of, and they don't, like I said, they're out of business, that even made a 69 Roadrunner model, and it had all, had all the, uh, on the, if you notice on the side, it's even got the Roadrunner embossed, and it's got the uh, Roadrunner decal on it, <coughs> including the back with the stand-up bird. Well, I got actual decals that I'm going to put on there, and plus I have that, uh, bought that rare stripe that goes on the side of it from Keith Marks. Excellent decals fellas if you want to restore old muscle car models, build old muscle car models. That cat got them. Now you might have to pay for them. They, they pretty pricey. Oops. Oh. They pretty pricey. But they worth it. Man, I've uh, they're great decals. They're easy to use. Uh, they're good. And uh, awesome. But anyway, I took up enough of y'all's time, and I'll be looking forward to seeing y'all's projects and y'all's builds, and I appreciate the the um, support of all my subscribers. I know I hadn't built, done videos in a while. I, I've done one to explain why, but uh, anyway, I want to get back into the saddle. I've already got my parts together. I'm going to probably give them a, a bath and get them ready to start prepping, and and just seeing what I got and what I need to go locate and dig around in other kits to uh, to achieve. So the, the parts needed to build this thing. Well, y'all guys take it easy out there. And as always, just build one scale model, one build scale models one part at a time. And I'll catch y'all later. And y'all take care and God bless each and every one of you. Thank you.